Hey guys, I'm Patrick Hall with fstoppers.com and today we are in Valdez, Alaska and I want to try to do a cool landscape photo, but unfortunately the tide is coming in really, really quickly. Let's see if we can make this work. Another beautiful morning here in Valdez. Besides the, the smell of dead salmon, nothing can really describe how pretty this is. I mean, look at this. This is Prince Edward Sound, and look how smooth it is. It's like glass out there. So right now, the tide is really far out, but it's so shallow that you really need waders, and I don't have waders, despite having my moon boots. So what I think I'm going to try to do is the sun hasn't actually peaked up over the mountains yet. I think there might be some photograph I could try here. So I'm gonna go get my tripod and try to arrange something here with the rocks, get the sky and get these mountains before the sun comes up. And then maybe I can do some sort of time blending exposure. So for today's shoot, what I wanna do is get a really nice vertical landscape. I don't have many vertical pictures and I really like the way verticals print out because there's a lot of space on my walls in my home and in my office that verticals just kind of work better than horizontals. So this is gonna be more of a subdued landscape. It's not gonna be crazy with all sorts of epic skies and everything. This is gonna be a little more gentle and I think it's gonna be something I actually wanna put on my wall. Of course, this guy just caught a fish. There he goes. Can I cast out that far is the question. I don't know. I'm gonna still go get my tripod. So what I'm doing here is I have a neutral density filter by Polar Pro and it's on this Tamron 17 to 35 millimeter lens. And as you can see, my settings are F8, but I'm in this cool bulb mode to where I can just hit the shutter, wait four or five minutes and then hit the shutter again and it'll end the exposure. What's really nice about this is I don't need any kind of intervalometer controller or anything and I can do exposures that are really long. So since this is a 10 stop neutral density filter, my hope is that I can make this water look really smooth. But what I haven't considered is the tide is coming in really, really quickly. So over the course of a five minute exposure, the tide was out here and now it's here. So I don't know what this is gonna look like. It may have a really interesting effect. So while this four minute shutter is going on, let me just talk about the gear that I have. I have an Oben tripod. I brought this because it's literally the most lightweight tripod that I own and it's pretty inexpensive and I don't really care about it. So when it gets wet, it's not the end of the world. I'm definitely not bringing my most expensive tripods up here. And then for the camera, I have a Nikon D850. I love this camera. It's one of my favorite still cameras. It's got so many megapixels that it really allows you to blow up huge prints. It allows you to crop in a lot. And I think it's one of the most versatile cameras I've ever owned. I'm also using the new Tamron 17 to 35 lens. Now this is a 2.8 to 4 variable aperture lens. So a lot of people might say, oh, it's not 2.8 throughout the entire lens, but it's really great for landscapes because one, you're gonna be shooting at F8 and it's gonna be sharp at all of those focal points. And this lens is so much smaller and lighter than the other 2.8 versions that you might wanna travel with. So it's really nice when you're trying to pack light because these lenses can get really heavy. And I'm also using the Polar Pro 10 stop neutral density filter. And I've done a couple videos on that recently. And this is the first time I'm really using it in a landscape environment with water. And I think it's doing really, really well. It has very little color cast. So for me, having a few of these in my bag, they weigh absolutely nothing. And it's just a nice tool to have when you think you might wanna pull out your camera and do a long exposure. All right, so that exposure looked really, really cool. I wanna to try to get one more in, but what I fear is in four minutes, this tide's already gonna be way to the right of my frame. So I'm still waiting for the light to kind of hit the mountains. All right, so I got two exposures. The first one I think was the best. The second one, the tide's a little too far in my frame, but the third one, I want to get a really nice sky without moving the camera, but you can see the tide, oh my gosh, it's really moving in quick. So I'm a little nervous keeping my camera out in the water like this, but luckily it's pretty smooth already. So this sky is one of the most unbelievable skies I've ever seen. It's cloudy there, really pretty skies here. And then you got these nice streaky clouds way down there. I mean, every day it's been so clear in Alaska and then today we have like the best skies ever. So hopefully I can get one more shot and let those clouds really streak by. All right, so the sun's starting to come up and cast really nice light here on the mountains. But unfortunately the light hasn't quite hit my scene yet. And man, I am like really deep in water now. So what I think I'm gonna have to do, and I don't know that I've really seen anyone do this, but I think it's gonna work, is I'm gonna move my camera back on shore and then since this scene right here is so far away, I think I can just frame 
up another shot and wait for the sun to hit those mountains and then just layer mask them in Photoshop and bring back the color on the mountains that I want. You can kind of see some light hitting this mountain here, but what I really want is some of these ridges to have some detail in them. And then I'd also love to have the rocks have a little, a little bit of side light. So I might have to do some compositing, which isn't ideal, but I didn't expect the water to come up here this quick. I mean, look at this. My tripod's already in like three inches of water. The moon boots are getting wet. So we'll have to see what happens. But man, I think it's gonna be really nice when this gets side lit. All right, Eli Licardi, you'd be happy for me. First light on the tips of the mountains. I'm here for it. I just need it to now hit this side of the mountain and we'll be able to add some cool, interesting texture into this final landscape. All right, so I finished my last exposures. Let's get this into Photoshop and see if I can blend a few of these together and produce something that's hopefully worthy of printing on my wall. All right, so welcome to the post-production section of this short little tutorial. And I just wanna run you through the Photoshop file because I know the before and after of this image looks crazy, but really, I don't feel like I did all of that much. I actually thought this was gonna be a much harder edit out in the field because I thought because I was moving my tripod, I'd have to blend some things in a really creative way. But when I got back to the computer, I actually found out that I had enough images all from one session to where I really didn't have to move anything too much. So let me show you what I got going on here. So here is the before image, and this shot was actually taken when the tide was a little bit higher, even though the foreground rock would make you believe otherwise. And you can see the sky is not streaked, it's just a, a really quick shutter. You don't really have any blur in the water, and overall this shot's actually a decent base image, but I really did not use this all that much. Instead, I used the long exposure here, but let's get into this a little bit more. I'm gonna turn off all of these layers here, and let's start with the long exposure. So again, this shot looks pretty crazy. I mean, this is very dramatic. If we zoom in, you can see that the water just has this really ghostly look. And that's because we use that 15 stop neutral density filter. And you can see it adds this cool kind of fog effect up here by the rocks, which I really like. But if I compare this shot with the background image, there are elements of the water here that I like. I mean, this almost looks painterly. You can see some of the, the rocks underneath the water. You have some cool reflections. So my thought when I got into Photoshop is I, I might wanna blend two of these exposures to kind of bring out some detail in the water while also keeping some of the uh, foggy effect that we got using the long neutral density filter. So let's start with this long exposure. I would say that this is probably the base image that I used. And this is about a four minute and 30 second exposure. So this was fairly long. And as you saw, the tide was moving extremely fast, which made this a little challenging. So the first layer that I added is just a darkened layer. Basically, this is a curves layer where I just kind of pulled down the midtones. And if you want to be able to do this on your own, you can click on layer, go to new adjustment layer and hit levels or curves. You could use either one of those. And what that's going to do is it's going to give you a curves layer that you can then quickly adjust and you can always revisit it if you want. So basically this is just darkening up the sky and with every one of these adjustment layers, it also has a built-in mask, which is really nice. So as you can see here, I have, let me hit Alt and click on this. I have actually kind of burned out a lot of the darkness on the lower side of the frame while letting some of the darkening effect show through with the white on the top side of this frame. So let me go ahead and turn that back on. And as you can see, it just kind of gives a little bit more punch to the sky. And again, this sky was all natural. I mean, that's just a single long exposure, which is really cool. So next, when I started looking at this, I thought, you know, as the sun started to rise, I have a couple frames where right here on the far part of the shore, I got this really nice highlight. And honestly, I wish the highlight was even more. But the only frame that I got that I could really use to blend that in is this shot here. So let me turn off this mask. And you can see this is the single frame, which looks a lot like the original background layer. But as you can see, if we zoom in, there's this really nice natural highlight that comes straight down the side of the shore here. So I just added a layer mask. And then as you can see here, I just kind of brushed in that highlight. And then I added a few extra highlights that were from that brighter exposure in the overall water. And then one trick to make sure I didn't have any kind of ghosting happening, I also set this layer up here to lighten. 
And what Lighten does is it's going to only allow the lightest pixels to bleed through on the image. And since I was only trying to get a little more detail in the water and this nice highlight on the shore, the Lighten really works well for that. The next thing I wanted to do was I have this layer here, which if you can see in this rock, it really brings the tide up a little bit. It just adds some highlights and some clarity all over the water, but most importantly, I felt like this rock here right in the foreground, I felt like it was a little boring and it got kind of lost. So by blending in another exposure with a slightly higher tide, I was able to get this nice contrast on the lower part of the rock and it just really added a more interesting element to the lower part of the frame. So now that I have the lower part of this photograph looking really good, the real key to this shot, I believe, is going to be the light hitting the top of the mountains. And since the sun is rising, but it's being blocked by other huge mountains on the right-hand side that you can't see, you really had to stay in this position for a long time to get the sun to come up over those mountains and then cast light directly on the mountains. Luckily, I was able to get some shots like this where you can see this is just a single frame straight out of camera, and you can see we have some nice highlights here on the upper left mountain range. So as you can see, I really just brought in just the littlest bit of that exposure so that I could get a little highlight on the left side of the mountain. Of course, I want some light on the right side of the mountain, so I had to wait another five or ten more minutes, and the sun came up, and you can see what that does. I'll go ahead and show you that full exposure. That's it right here, which actually has pretty good nice light on the left too, but I wound up not using that. And if I turn on this mask, you can see I just exposed a little bit of that scene there on the right. Now, of course, if you zoom in, you can kind of tell that this light is really muddy. It almost looks gray. It just doesn't quite blend in well enough. So I made another layer adjustment, this time a curve. And as you can see from this curve, I just kind of brought down the blacks and then boosted up the midtones. And what that did, if I turn this on and off, it just allowed that scene underneath to have a little more pop and to have a little more contrast, which I think now really brings this whole scene together. Now, when I was looking at a few of the other images that I shot, I wound up having a bunch of frames that had some random seagulls in it. And of course, as you saw in the video, there were tons of seagulls everywhere in the scene. So I actually found quite a few bird shots that worked really well. And so what I wound up doing was just blending in three different birds. I have a really blurry one back here, and then I have a really nice dark one right here. So let me just turn off all of the layers here, and I'm gonna go up to the main bird and just turn this one on. And what I did was I used my marquee tool, I selected the bird, I did select inverse, and then I just deleted all of the pixels. Because what happens in Photoshop is when you start layering 10, 12, 15 images, it gets really, really large and your computer starts to slow down. But if you delete all of the pixels in photos that you don't actually need, it's going to make your computer run a lot smoother. So for these bird shots, if I just turn these on, I've deleted all the pixels, so only just a few little pixels are showing up in the spots where I need them. And then for all of these images, because the birds are so much darker than the scene, I've changed the adjustment layer to darken which is going to do the opposite of brighten. It's only going to allow the darkest pixels to bleed through the image. So all of this bright sky, I don't have to mask it at all because it's brighter than the scene that I'm using and therefore it's not gonna show up. So at this point, I feel like the image is pretty much done, but I felt like it was lacking a little punch, a little contrast. So I added another curves layer and as you can see, if I turn this on and off, I was able just to, you know, kind of pull down some of the blacks, bump up some of the mids, pull down some of the highlights. This is actually kind of a crazy curve. And I did play around with this for a good 10 minutes before I got it exactly the way I wanted. But I feel like that just kind of polishes the image off. And then as I was looking through the final images to see if there's anything that I missed, I noticed that I had a really cool frame of a guy fishing out there. Somehow he was not in any of these frames, but the whole morning he was out there fishing right in front of me. And so I found this really cool frame of this guy fishing, which I think just really adds a sense of scale and it really makes the image have more of a story. And he isn't really noticeable. I mean, he's right there in the middle of the frame, but he's so small that when you first see the shot, I don't think your eye goes straight to the fisherman. But as you explore the image a little bit more, it's very obvious that, wow, there's a fisherman in this unbelievable scene. And that was kind of the overall vibe I was trying to capture with this photo. Now, in my opinion, this image is like 99% done. There was a little glare here that kind of bothered me. I don't know what really caused that, but I went ahead and added another layer where I Photoshopped that out. 
And then what I wanted to do is I wanted to add an alien skin to this photograph. Now, in order to add an alien skin or an effect onto the entire photograph, I need to flatten everything down into a single file. So what you can do is select the top layer, hold shift, select the bottom layer, and now by hitting alt control shift E, Photoshop will actually make a single file that we can call flatten. And now I have all of these layers blended down into one single file. And if I turn this on and off, you can see it's the exact same image. And now by using this flatten layer, I can go up here to my filters and I have a plugin for Alien Skin. I like to use Exposure X. And what's cool about Alien Skin is not only do they have all these cool presets for different slide films, different print films, Polaroid films, but they also have some really funky cross-processing looks and vintage looks. Some of these, I mean, you can add different uh, borders, you can add scratches. But what I really like about Alien Skin is in many cases, I can go to something like Colored Film Age, and I can just scroll through some of these, and they'll give me an idea of what my photo could look like, and maybe show me some toning options that I didn't really even consider. But you might come down here and find this one that's called Postcard. This looks kind of cool. It's really bumped up a lot of the highlights and it's made it a little more clear. And what I like about this is it just lets me see things that I might not have imagined otherwise. So the alien skin that I wound up using was this Kodak preset. If I turn this on and off, you can kind of see it just gives my image a little more punch. It just brings some of the highlights up and it just makes it look like a final polished image. So that's the final photograph. And this blending of time technique is something I learned from Eli Licardi. And if you want to learn more from him, he's an incredible landscape photographer. You can check out his work in the fstoppers.com slash store. He's much more meticulous than I am, and he can go in there and really pixel by pixel make this perfect. You can see I kind of just did some really broad strokes and, and really wasn't too particular with it. But I think in a scene like this, it really works well because it's a very subdued, subtle scene where everything can be brushed in kind of softly. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. This was a little different of a video because I filmed everything on my iPhone and it was just something I thought of doing because I wasn't catching any fish that day. If you want more content like this, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel below. Also head over to fstoppers.com for free daily content. And if you wanna learn from some of the best photographers in the world, including Elia Licardi, make sure you head over to fstoppers.com store where you can check out our full length tutorials.